What is up everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of November, slowly creeping up here to the month of December in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, we're also going to be breaking down UGAS, DGAS, natural gas, some weather outlook over these next couple of weeks, and kind of what to expect based on some analysts for this natural gas report tomorrow. So if you guys find value in this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me, and if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community, the Discord link is down below, as well as the Facebook group, many people in there, many traders, many investors that you can really just network with and bounce ideas off of. So let's hop into it right here, guys, with 10 minutes left. I guess you can say 11 minutes if you want to be exact here. The S&P 500 is down 12 points. And finally, guys, we got that healthy correction that the markets have been needing here over the past couple of weeks. We finally got it today. And this is actually something I've been talking about, and I kind of talked about it more in depth in yesterday's video. And pretty much we can see on um, the hourly chart how much the S&P needed that pull down. We can see how overextended we were um, in terms of this RSI down here. We can also see how extended we were above that 50 SMA and that's why in yesterday's video I said you know if we do pull down look for it to find support either on the 50 SMA which it didn't or somewhere under there um, at a higher low which it seems like it's doing right Right now. So tomorrow, what I'd like to see is, you know, does this thing break above that 50 SMA and that EMA to ultimately continue this uptrend and get to another all time high? Or is it going to struggle and uh, potentially dump off and go to that 180 SMA, which is this yellow line and get to about 3067, maybe 3070, 3075, which would be um, an even bigger correction in the S&P 500. So that's kind of what we're looking at right now. If we go to the one day, one minute, you guys can see, you know, we gapped down. We kind of hovered at around 31.15 for a couple of hours. Then we saw a massive drop off here to about 30.91. And since then, we've been slowly um, recovering, right? So at this point, we were actually down. If we actually uh, just, just scale this up real quick, I don't know why it's not working here. Uh, actually, maybe my tool is off. Let's see. Okay, so we can see we were down at that point around close to 1%, 0.9% to be exact. And we also got some news today about the trade war that there's likely not going to be a phase one deal in 2019. Um, it's most likely if they do come to an agreement here, a phase one agreement, it's going to be obviously in 2020 or beyond. Hopefully not beyond, guys. Hopefully in 2020. Um, but let's take a look at this Dow Jones. Jones Industrial Average right now. It's down 120 points, down 0.43% uh, here. And if we go to that 20-day, one-hour chart, you can see we were overextended in terms of the RSI. We were very uh, kind of far off of that 50 SMA, screaming for a pullback, and we finally got it yesterday, right? Like we talked about in yesterday's video, and that ultimately led to today, which actually brought us down from that peak peak all-time high um, at about 28,100, down 1.3% um, at the low point here today, which was at around 27,700. So that's a pretty healthy correction, 1.3, 1.5% um, for the Dow Jones here over the past couple of days. So that's a good sign. And honestly, on a technical basis here, we're still holding a higher low, although we did break that 50 SMA. Um, we're still holding that higher low, guys, which is good here. So watch tomorrow. Do we break up? Do we uh, potentially continue this uptrend here to go for that higher high, right? To go for that 50 SMA and EMA break? Or are we going to sell off, test that 180 SMA? And obviously at that point, that would be a further correction. And that could be a good opportunity to buy the dip potentially if you guys are long on the markets right now. So the NASDAQ here down 0.75%. This one's getting hit the most right now. Down 
down 61 points at the time that I'm recording this video. And if we go to this hourly chart, you can see we hit that all-time high at 83.79. This was on the 19th of November, which was yesterday. And since then, we've pulled down. We've tested that 180 SMA. We broke below it a bit, but it seems like we are holding it and trying to fight back above it. Um, and that will be a higher low if it successfully pops and goes for that higher high and for that all-time high here, which would be anything above 83.79. So I'd watch and see what the NASDAQ does tomorrow. And it's really the same thing, you know, across all of these indexes. We've seen that healthy pullback that I was talking about over these next couple of videos. Now, all we're waiting to see is, are we going to hold the higher low and continue the uptrend? Or are we going to sell off and potentially see a further drop in these markets, maybe down two more percent, you know, three percent, four percent. We just have to wait and see. Um, the way this week ends, though, it's going to be super important because, you know, in these next two days, if we fight for this high, that's obviously going to be good for the bulls and we could continue up from there. But if we dump further, guys, this can issue a, a, a technical break that could trigger some panic selling at the end of the day, especially if we get a negative catalyst or something like that to go along with it. I know that's a lot of hypothetical stuff, but I'm trying to just give you guys ideas of what could happen and it honestly helps me with my strategies and with my risk management at the end of the day. So that's what the overall markets are looking like right now, a kind of a snapshot. Let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts and let's hop into what I did today in terms of my trades. And it was yet again another day where I didn't day trade. Guys, I feel like this is is um, the longest I haven't really day traded in a while, but I did end up locking in profits on Facebook by my trailing stop loss. My trailing stop loss actually saved me today um, because we saw Facebook took a pretty big dump. Um, if we go to this one day, one minute chart, we'll be able to see it. You know, at this point, we were up at uh, to about 199 bucks here this morning. Then we actually dropped all the way down to 195, guys. And this is why it's super important, especially if you're up on a position, uh, to just set a trailing stop loss. And what that is, let's say you're up on a position, right? Me personally, I was in Facebook around 193. At this point um, in the morning at 199, I was up um, how many percentage points? Probably like 3% or something like that. Let me just show you guys um, a, an exact figure here. So this morning, yep, I was up around 3% um, on Facebook, and I set a half percent trailing stop loss. That means, you know, if this thing continues to go up, that stop loss follows me, right? It follows um, the, the price and my profits don't get affected. But once the stock starts to fall, that is when the stop loss, it, it's 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 kind of hovering there at half of a percent below from where the stock's price is. And then once it continues to fall, gets closer to that half percent, that's where it triggers and it sells. And it kind of, again, protects your profits. And that's kind of exactly what happened today, again, with Facebook here, because I set the trailing stop. It was hovering. It was hovering. It was getting closer to that trailing stop, closer and closer, you know, 0.2% away, 0.1% away then all of a sudden it fell through the floor and uh locked in those profits thankfully because again we got to 195 now we're kind of climbing back up and at this point i'm going to look for a re-entry other swing trades i'm involved with paypal um kind of I, I didn't set a trailing for this one this one's kind of uh it dropped i lost a decent amount of my gains from yesterday but the good thing is here guys that we're still maintaining the uptrend based on the close of today's uh, session high or low here on the hourly chart. So I'm simply viewing this as a dip and I might actually consider buying more PayPal in tomorrow's session or maybe even Friday if this trend continues up. So not too worried, right? You know, hindsight and hindsight now, I should have taken my profits um, yesterday, but obviously uh, we can't go back in time and do that. So I'm just playing it the way it is now. I'm simply holding. I'm still up on the position, um, up about a dollar per share based on my average and yeah, simply holding there. Um, Shopify holding that one as well, but I'm a little bit down on those shares. Um, CMG 
This is one that I'm doing quite well on. I've been in this one since the 750s, continues to do well. My goal is to sell out at about 800 bucks, right under this 180S. So may, let me think, what other ones am I in, guys? McDonald's. Uh, McDonald's, I'm up a little bit on this one, but still, it's just been consolidating, nothing crazy. Looking for that break up to about 198, 200 bucks. That's where I ultimately plan on selling. So that's kind of the rundown on what I'm personally doing in my trading right now. Let me know down below in the comments what stocks are you trading what are you swing trading are you day trading or are you just chilling on the sidelines on cash which is never a bad idea at the end of the day because once opportunity comes that's when you'll be able to strike so let's talk about natural gas now guys all right guys so this is the natural gas chart that i'm personally watching the ticker symbol is slash ngf 20 and we're currently looking at the natural gas january futures so let's break down some technicals before we dive deeper into some report details uh some outlooks and kind of where to find the report and you gas and d gas in general so kind of what i'm looking at here on natural gas is we're trading between a range from about 258 to about two dollars and 97 cents i guess we can round that up and say three bucks so we're kind of in a 40 cent territory right now and if we look at the price action over these past couple of days one can argue that you know this level at two dollars and 57 cents is a very very strong level of support we consolidated there yesterday and today and now we're fighting to break above 260 and ultimately enter the next channel which is between 260 and about 266 this is looking like a pretty bullish close for today in my opinion on natural gas we can see it's up 1.5 percent up 0.03 uh, cents here up almost four cents but it's still not completely bullish because we didn't get that definitive break breakout quite yet and on and on a technical basis and honestly what we would want to see for you guys' sake which goes up whenever natural gas goes up it's obviously going to be that breakup that's going to get us ultimately from 260 up to 266 which is a move of two percent and ideally even higher and a breakout eventually above that 180 SMA which would be putting natural gas at a point where it's four or five percent higher from where it is right now but since it hasn't fully breaking out quite yet we can't go there but that's kind of what I'm watching for tomorrow in terms of trading you guys right so if we end up selling off here for example you know we we break below this 50 SMA again tomorrow we dump back into the 250s that's going to be a technical move that's obviously going to favor D gas which goes up whenever natural gas is selling off so at this point on a technical technical basis just judging on natural gas here I'm looking at what direction it's going to pick because it's really at a funky spot right now kind of hovering right around that 50 SMA telling me that it could really go either way at this point right so going to this report where can you find this report that's really important and and you know how the price of, of natural gas is going to perform so this is where you can find it the uh, the link is I r.eia.gov and you can simply go to google type in natural gas report and it's going to be one of the top links that pop up this is what it should look like so tomorrow you'll see a date right here where my cursor is that says 11 slash 15 and that's going to be the data for the week between the 8th of november to the 15th of november which is that one week period right which is going to show the data we'll see the east region midwest mountain pacific etc i made a video about last week's report um, about a week ago so go check that out i'll leave a link down below uh, but pretty much last week we actually had an injection of three billion 
million cubic feet, which is going to lead us to some um, um, predictions of what this could be for tomorrow. And let me pull up some info for you guys right now. So as I was doing some natural gas research today, guys, the early view storage survey Friday showed 20 respondents predicting a median 89 BCF withdrawal for the week ended November 15th with expectations ranging from a withdrawal of 65 billion cubic feet up to a withdrawal of 102 billion cubic feet. So based on these 20 um, reports, tomorrow we could potentially see, you know, a withdrawal of 62 to around 100 uh, billion cubic feet there, which pretty much would show on this number here, um, instead of a three, it would be like a negative 50 number, negative 30, negative 70, depending on what the number actually is is right and that really correlates with how the weather has been um you know across the country from the midwest northeast south all that good stuff so we might as well just talk about some data that i have on that and kind of where people think the weather is going to be going here over these next two weeks which again fluctuate the demand for natural gas the prices and then obviously whether you gas or d gas is going to go up or down which is important for us as traders. So for this week we're currently in, actually from a couple of days ago, November 15th to November 21st, a reinforcing cold shot will sweep across the Great Lakes and Northeast from Friday to Sunday, which is going to be this weekend with chilly lows of 10s to 30s. A second milder system brings heavy showers to the Southeast with lows of 30s and 40s. The Western and Central U.S. will be mild with highs of 50s to 80s, coolest North Northwest. A weather system will track across the east and southeast early next week, just not a very cold one. Mild conditions will cover the rest of the U.S. early next week with much lighter national demand. A stronger cold shot is expected into the northern U.S. late next week. Overall, high national demand through Sunday, then moderate early next week. So if we hop into what people are thinking for next week, according to Nat Gas Weather for November 19th to November 25th, Three separate weather systems will impact the northern U.S. today, but none very cold. One will exit the northeast, a second will track across the Great Lakes, and a third will push into the west. While slightly cool, these systems will still have highs of upper 30s to 50s. The rest of the U.S. will be mild to warm with highs of 60s and 70s, warmest over Texas as high pressure sets up over the central U.S., then shifts over the south and east Wednesday through Friday. A fresh cold shot will push into the central U.S. Thursday, then into the east Friday through Saturday with lows of 20s to 30s. Overall, light national demand this week increasing slightly this weekend on eastern U.S. cooling. Overall, national demand will be moderate through Friday, then high this upcoming weekend. So there you have it, guys. That's some info on weather, which is currently happening now and kind of what to expect here over these next couple couple of days in the month of November. And we all know at this point, the way that it works is once we get more withdrawals of natural gas, again, we talk about the estimates from some of these analysts, you know, once we get withdrawals and demand starts to kick in and it gets extremely cold throughout the United States, right? That is when the price of natural gas is going to go up, right? That's when supply is going down because it's being used. And again, that's pushing the price up. But one thing to consider is I've read there's a lot of production of natural gas this year, and it might not be as cold as it was last year when we saw that massive push in natural gas, which we can see on this chart here. You guys can see it went from 273 up to nearly $5, which is why we saw a parabolic move in you gas last year. So that's something to consider here, right? You know, although cold weather is going to be coming here, we'll be getting withdrawals for sure. You know, overall, a lot of people aren't thinking it's going to be as cold um, this winter, which really, is, it's not too good for natural gas in terms of its upside, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't have any upside at this point. Sure, it may not hit five bucks like it did last year, but it may go up to three, maybe 
maybe 320, 330 before ultimately selling off again, um, heading into the warm season. So you guys, D guys, guys, what am I watching here? You guys today actually did quite well. It was up 58 cents, up 4.45%. But if we're still judging on this hourly chart, we're trending below the 50 SMA still. We're trending below, obviously, the 180 SMA. So ideally at this point, if we get that natural gas pop that we talked about up to 265, and if we break that, that's going to shoot up you guys here um, tomorrow above this 50 SMA, and it gives it room uh, to run at that point up to that 180 SMA, which would be a gain of about 13 to 14%. And of course, like I always do typically on Thursdays, guys, I wait until after the report before trading because that's kind of going to show us the trajectory of, you know, you guys and D-Gas. Let's say we get a huge, uh, a wider than expected withdrawal tomorrow, which is extremely bullish. This thing could be flying up 20% in a day, and we've seen that happen before. So I'm kind of waiting to see, um, but the technicals that I'm watching out for are that breakup here or if we get a report that's bearish tomorrow, right, we may drop, and then DGAS will be the play. But honestly, guys, I think in these next two weeks, I'm still remaining bullish. Uh, but the thing is, again, like I mentioned, I don't think we're going to see as crazy of a run as last year because a lot of people are saying, again, there's a lot of production out there, and it's not going to be as cold. But that doesn't mean that this thing can't run, uh, which, again, is why I'm watching it for the potential upside that it has. That is you gas and natural gas that is and of course once this season's over we can flip back to degas and then trade that um, as natural gas falls so overall that's kind of what I'm thinking right now guys some data some analysis some weather outlook for um, natural gas and kind of what can fluctuate these over the next couple of weeks so let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts on that now let's talk about some other stocks and ETFs that I'm watching here and there's really just a couple uh, that I really want to go over with you all. So let's get into that right now. So the first one that I want to talk about that did very well today is Altria, ticker symbol M. Oh, and we finally got news that Donald Trump, the president of the U.S., he's backing down from banning flavored e-cigarettes. So this is why Altria, again, ticker symbol MO, saw this massive spike because it owns Juul. It has a huge ownership in Juul. So this stock went from 47 up to nearly 50 bucks on the news. Now it's cooling off a bit, but still closing at a higher low from where it started on that positive catalyst. So honestly, guys, MO is a stock that I own in my long-term portfolio. I've been buying it in the low uh, uh, low 40s, high 30s. I bought a lot down there. Um, and honestly, I've been riding it up, and I see potential in it now for my swing portfolio even, right? And it's because, again, that positive momentum from this news today, um, and it's been really uptrending over the past couple of weeks, riding moving averages and really reversing to the upside um, based on the six month chart. This is looking like a stock that's overall reversing, right? We were we were getting rejected by moving averages here a couple months ago. Honestly, a couple of weeks ago, we broke out of those moving averages. We broke above 47, which is a major resistance. Now the next resistance is 40 bucks. We got the positive catalyst today. We ultimately pulled down to 48.45, opening up that margin. So now I see this level where we are right now um, being a pretty good entry point for a swing up to 50 bucks. So I'm watching that one about three, four percent margin. Um, in this particular stock. Another one that's looking good as a swing is ATV, guys. Ticker symbol ATVI Activision Blizzard. Let me show you all on the four-hour chart why, and you can probably guess yourselves why I'm attracted to this stock. We held 52 bucks very nicely, which was a support a couple weeks ago. That's a good sign, right? Ever since then, if we look on the hourly chart, we've been making higher highs, higher lows, riding moving averages. Now we're breaking above the 180 
ADSMA on this hourly chart, which in my opinion is a breakout sign. Now we can potentially go up to 55, 56 bucks, um, which is really what this 180 SMA break signifies and indicates to me personally. So that is looking like an upside of around 3.2 to around 3.3% if Atvi is able to make that move. Marijuana stocks or MJ stocks, again, use the code word MJ here. MJ stocks did quite well today yet again. ACB up 12%. Uh, we talked heavily about these yesterday. If you guys want to see more in-depth um, analysis on the MJ stocks and one that I would pick, go check out yesterday's video. But just to run through them right now, you know, Afria went up 5%. CGC went up 15%. Cron up about 3%. Uh, it's not as good as the others, but still a good day, uh, you know, um, you know, with how they how poorly they've been doing, right? OGI up 6%. Tilray um, up a nice 4%. So MJ stocks did quite well today. And this is due to the federal ban. Um, they're, they're potentially looking to lift it. And, uh, you know, you can see it right here. Cannabis stocks rally for a second day after House passes bill aiming to lift federal ban on MJ. So that's a really good catalyst for these stocks. If they um, break out from here, if they actually do lift that ban, these stocks have a lot more potential in store. Um, and again, go check out yesterday's video if you want to see my opinion on which one I am personally buying and want to buy a lot more of. So another stock that's dipping today is Apple, guys, um, AAPL. I don't know if this is worth buying because it's been up so much recently, but it's on fire and any dip, you have to consider it even though it's high up here. So it's, I think it's worth watching. Um, would I rather put my money in Apple or, um, you know, one of these other stocks? Eh, it, it's questionable, right? But I'd still consider... Apple uh, at this point on this dip from 263 up to 270 or 268. That's about a 2% margin of profit. Um, it's worth watching here, guys. But again, if this thing ends up breaking you know, this level to the downside, maybe we get a negative catalyst. This stock can be hammered just due to it going up so quick. I feel like it could come back um, even quicker, right? Come back down. We all know stocks, you know, they typically go up slowly, slowly, slowly. Then when they crash, it happens in a couple of days. They come down a lot quicker than they go up. So one more that I want to talk about before I do end off this video, guys, it's going to be PG, Procter & Gamble. We're finally breaking above 121.75 into the 122. So this one's worth watching for a potential swing up to that resistance at 125, giving it a level uh, margin of profit of around two to three percent. So those are kind of some stocks I'm watching. Um, you know, some industries I'm watching. I'm watching heavily these MJ stocks, guys. Um, anything, any catalyst that's positive here, like cannabis 2.0, this thing could explode these stocks, and we can see gains that 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 crush but we need to see those catalysts and honestly they have a lot of headwind here over these next couple of months so i don't know if anything will happen to them soon here but long term i do see potential in them and um yeah that's pretty much it for the video if you enjoyed it feel free to go down below hit that like button consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me and if you want to be a part of the strive smart community the discord link is down below the facebook links down below and the merch is also linked down below if you want to pick up a hoodie, a t-shirt, maybe even a beanie because it is getting cold outside. Um, yeah, that's all linked down below. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.